Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow Fury 33, once again, with replay between Monkuki and Gadolite on Snowblind, which Monkuki really wanted me to cast, so we'll see what it is that made this game so exciting that he asked for it. Monkuki starting out in the southwest corner of the map. Going probably back here. Catalyte, northeast corner, definitely going. Sorry, Shardon, not Catalyte. Wait. Oh, it is Shardon. My mistake. I'm sorry, Shardon. So we're not going to be seeing any CISO proxy all-ins. Not today. In fact, we're going to be seeing a Vecure Mirror, most likely. Yep, Vecure Mirror. Monkey can go for his proxy, most likely, but Shardon is not likely to be as aggressive. I don't know him to be the same sort of all-in, at least Echo all-in. Nope, he is not. He's going in with his Zion Veer in his main base, and the Shin and Teth Veer onto the front lines for scouting. Monkey, on the other hand, going... For everything, there we go, that's what he always does. All three infantry, I am still surprised he has continued to do that. I should point out, these last four replays actually happened over the span of about four weeks. No, three weeks. The first one was done on June 16th, this one was done on July 8th. Because, I actually don't know. I mean, it was played on those game, Matt played on those days, it was uploaded very recently. Monkuki doesn't upload his replays very often. And he's the only one who does, so, yeah. Anyway, like I said... Over the course of the last three weeks, Monkuki has not really changed his playstyle very much, at least his opening. Still goes for the proxy, or attempted proxy opener. Shinveer still alive, though. Could go with Shin and Zyanveer, and Zyanveer is promising. If you have the Zyanveer, you have a lot of ground firepower. With the Foundation support, it's rather difficult to punish, though admittedly, we're dealing with Foundation versus Foundation. It's going to come down to who Foundation spam is the best. But Monkuki knows his Foundation spam. The only downside is Monkuki going to have to build the initial Foundation, which is slightly more expensive. Then what Shardon's going to have to build. And Shardon, on the other hand, has time to prepare. And Shardon will probably build a foundation beforehand, actually. Let's see. We'll see if... What's Monkuki going for in his main base? Monkuki has... Well, nothing. Now going for a second Zion Pulsar. Sorry, Zion Veer. This is a 248 mark. Just walking around, seeing what's going on. This is Monkuki's point of view, by the way. Not even going to attack. Just patrolling around this base. Seeing what has been built. Using the Shin Veer. While Shardon, on the other hand... Shardon is... He's going to defend... Near his own base, and actually going to lose his infantry in the process from the looks of it. The Shin and Teth Veer were not in a great position. We'll see, though. Shin Veer actually getting some free shots off the Teth Veer. Yeah, this is going to go very poorly. Although, the Teth Veer goes down. Both Teth Veers go down first. And Zion Veer going to go down for Shardon first, but Monkeys won't last much longer. And Shardon loses the Shin Veer as well, so there's one last Shin Veer still alive. With Shardon probably going to rebuild that Zion Veer to deal with the Shin Veer and ultimately stop the attack. Forcing Monkuki to equit out and go back to a more normal style of game, which is always how it goes. Monkuki has not has not seen him get off a foundation rush fully in about a month or so. And actually, this is a, this iteration is an even better defense for Shardon, managing to micro just right, or at least getting lucky. I'm not sure exactly which, but Monkuki, regardless, going back to normal, keeping his Zion Veer in base and using the Shin and Teth Veer forward. Everyone seems everyone knows what Monkuki does nowadays, and Admittedly, Shardon just beat it with Micro, but still, Monkuki, I don't even think he's committing to those anymore. I think he's just doing that because that's what he always does, and it's just... If he didn't do it at this point, it might be, he might be thinking it's suspicious to not do it. But yeah, Monkuki, that's just what he does. That's his thing. He echoes out, attacking with all three infantry. Which I suppose is one benefit. I mean, the thing is, if you think about it, attacking with all your infantry like that does mean you will be able to scout, most likely. Your opponent is probably just going to go for two... Or in the case of Grekim, they're probably just going to go for one or so. Like, maybe an Octo or maybe a Faro. But yeah, in the case of Vekir and Ciso, they're going to only send out two of their infantry. Which means if you send out all of yours for at least one iteration or two, you're going to be able to scout them out. You're going to be able to plow through their own infantry, most likely, and scout them out. I don't know if that's what Monkuki is doing right now, because he has tried to go for the Foundation Rush. But it's not worked out. Still, anyone who plays Monkuki, bear that in mind, if you ever play Monkuki which I'm sure everyone who's watching this who plays Akron already has. Yeah, Foundation Rush is what he always does, and just bear that in mind. He's always going to try to do that, so push away his inventory, and then go back to the normal game. A regularly scheduled tech into, late, tech into mid game strategy that everyone does once the Foundation Rush fails. Depot coming up at the 2 minute mark. A little bit earlier than usual, but I think the usual may just be earlier than it has been before. Though it's 3 and 2, so it's still kind of early. While Shardon, on the other hand, going for, looks like 6 and 1 at this stage. 
Yep, six and one. It actually had six and two further in the future. Yeah, if you go with Monkey's point of view, it's six and three, in fact, and no Debo at that point. No Debo up to the three fifty mark. Wow, that is late. Well, not actually that not that late, but Monkey's is early, regardless. Monkey's is coming into the two minute mark. Well, finished at the two thirty mark. Normally, it's about the three thirty mark. So, Monkey is looking aggressive. Going to go for the, some Shin pulsers. Uh, not Shin pulsers. Going to go for some Zion pulsers. No one ever goes for Shin pulsers. Gonna go for some Zion Pulsers, and, well, that's what, well, we'll see what Shardan does as a, as a response. I mean, Shardan has his foundation for the Depot, the 320 mark, getting the foundation up, has enough resources for the Depot, once the Liquid Crystal comes in, has the Cube Plasma, that's for sure, and getting a second foundation, what the, wait, is he going for an Aerial Control Center Rush? I, well, we'll see, no, he's going for a lot of foundations, he might just be going for defensiveness, yeah, units are coming in. I think he's being defensive. Not a bad idea. There are Zion Pulsers coming in. But yeah, a couple of foundations being built up. Three foundations are up by the four-minute mark. No depots up to this point. So Shardon has not actually built that up yet. Although, mainly Shardon has enough resources at this iteration. He has the three foundations. No additional forces, though. No additional buildings. Just the foundations for healing. And Monkuki scouts that out. Sees all the foundations, but... We'll see what he does about that. Has the Zion Pulsers, and the Zion Pulsers are on their way. They're halfway to Monkey's base. Going around the side, just trying to avoid the obvious path. So it looks like infantry wandering in to scout out when Zion Pulsers are hot on their heels. Still, fourth foundation. Wow, what is Shardon doing? This is a lot of healing. He is really paranoid about this. And AC. Oh, wow, okay, there we go. Aerial Control Center is exactly what is going on right before the depot, too. So Aerial Control Center Rush, Shardon, what is he going for? Probably Shin Turcher. A little bit risky, but on the other hand, Zion Pulses are basically guaranteed from Monkuhi, so it's not a bad idea. While Monkuhi, on the other hand, going for Zion Turcher. And no Teth units whatsoever. Not yet aware of the Aerial Control Center, which... Really good timing on Shardon's part. Not exposing that until right after the attack comes in, after that scout comes in. Not sure if he predicted that or what, but definitely the infantry information is not out there, and... Shin Pulsers! Two Shin Pulsers coming from Shardan. This never happened. Three oh wow! Shardan is actually going for Mass Shin Pulser. I have never, ever seen... In the last four years, I have never seen this before. This, this is unprecedented. No one ever goes Mass Shin Pulser. I think this is why Monkuyi... Okay. I'm pretty sure this is why Monkuyi wanted me to cast this game. Because this never happens. Okay, I shouldn't say I think. It's actually in the description. I just didn't want to give that away. But yeah. Shin Pulsar. Still, the Zion Pulsars are coming in. And that's going to be tricky to get around. Their two Shin Pulsars are not even half... They're only a quarter of the way done. And there's no additional defenses at the moment. While Monkuki, on the other hand, has a couple Zion Turchers as well. And they, that Zion Turcher is skipping in to assist the Zion Pulsars. I think maybe the first two Shin Pulsars might come out before the depot is destroyed. That third one, maybe. Just maybe. It's going to be a tough call. However, Shardan does have more foundations, and that depot is lasting a while thanks to the foundations. Now being healed up thanks to the foundations. Or it was. The Shin Turchers are lasting a bit longer. Sorry, the Shin Pulsar is lasting a bit longer. See, like I said, unprecedented. I don't even have the, the vocal memory of saying Shin Pulsars. Plural. But here we have it. Three Shin Pulsars. Actually, the Shin Pulsars are real. They are actually happening. However, unfortunately, in the second iteration, we see the Zion Turchers are doing their darndest to get rid of them. And not doing a bad job either. Fortunately, one of the Shin Pulsers did end up on the ground, not able to take the skies. But another Shin Pulser being built up, and... Monkuki doesn't seem to worry about them, but... Shardon actually dealing a fair amount of damage. Shin Pulsers, as I mentioned before, they're actually one of my favorite units. In theory, I mean... I've always kind of liked them, I'm not sure why. But they actually are pretty good generalists. I mean, they're 40... It's 9 damage a second. But they're... They're a little bit expensive. That's the only thing. They're... What are they? Let's see. 8754. Compared to the 6515 for the Zion Pulsar. It's not hard to see why they aren't easily justified. Especially when you consider that you need the Aerial Control Center on top of that. Now, the Aerial Control Center isn't that expensive, but it's still something. It's 2520 on top of the 65 for the Depot. Sorry, for the Foundation. So that's 9020. And then you need to have the Shin Pulsar cost on top of that. So... Shin Pulsers have generally been considered cost ineffective, but working out today, especially with foundation support, 
However, they are also not detectors, and that is where Shin Churches would come in, or foundations. If a foundation is built further up, if Sharadon fixes this, builds the foundation further up, not aware of this attack, though, in fact, he's gonna just lose his base and looks near the unplayable past, not jumping back to fix it, is building a foundation later on, but by this point, I'm pretty sure Monkuki has destroyed the Annex. So not much more is gonna be said here. These Shin Pulses will be moving out from that base. However, Sharadon has seen what's going on, does see the depot has been destroyed, has no real chance of going back to save it. However, could build a foundation for detection. Needs to build a foundation for detection. That is the absolute thing that needs to happen. Foundation for detection, so that the Shin Pulsers can kill the Zion Turchers, but that is not happening. In fact, one that has died over the Shin Veer, that drops and then can detect. So at least that's something, but still a little bit late on that found quite a bit late on the foundation, really. Very late on it, and the Zion Turcher, unless foundation is built up for the depot, I think the Zion Turcher is going to win the game for Monkuki. However, Sharon, is he going to just avoid that entire- Yeah, he is! Okay, there we go. There's the foundations. Getting foundations for the Shin Pulsers, and ultimately taking out the Zion Turchers before they can take out any more buildings. And they can't do much here. They aren't paying attention to the Shin Pulsers. Shar Monkuki has be not become aware- of Oh, he has become aware of this. Moving one of the Zion Turchers out of range of the foundation, but the second Zion Turcher not so lucky. And once that Shin Pulsar dies- Oh, doesn't matter. The Shin Pulsar actually was very unlucky. Was over an unpassable area and ended up dying on drop. So Shin Pulsar cannot kill the Zion Turcher, but still another depot will be forthcoming. A foundation is up, but a little bit too late. Sharon's going to have to go back and make sure that it's built up earlier, but he does have auto defense, and that auto defense will settle it. So Monkuki is- ow. Monkuki is going to- what is he going to be building here? Well, he has a couple Teth pu Pulsars coming in. The Teth Pulsars, I think, might be a little too late. The depot is being rebuilt. Shardon has a lot of money in the bank. Uses a lot of it on foundations, but still has a lot of it in the bank. Monkuki actually, he is 5 and 1, while Shardon has been, looks like, 4 and 4 the entire time. So Shardon well ahead in Q Plasma and a little bit behind in Liquid Crystal. Not by much, though, and now very much, or very nearly indestructible. Shin Pulsars with a Shin Turcher coming in to finish the job. This is going to be game. There are a couple of Teth Pulsars. They will be able to be somewhat useful, but they don't have... Sp well, they do have a bit of splash damage, but yeah, those... That combination of units is probably just going to overwhelm them, especially with Foundation Support. They are being aggressive. The foundation Support will do it if nothing else does. However, Zion Turcher to the north runs out of energy. No longer cloaked. The Shin Pulsar and Shin Turcher can get rid of it. Now, Monku getting Sleep Teleport on the Teth Pulsers. We'll see how effective that is. Depends on when the Shin Pulsers and Shin Turcher come up. It should be fairly effective. The Shin Pulsers and Shin Turcher are not going to come up for another 10 seconds or so. And they're probably going to go... They are going to go north. They are queued to go north to get rid of that Zion Turcher. And it will not last very long. Zion Turcher has no energy left. Monku is probably going to skip it back, actually. Yeah, he's going to skip it back. No doubt about that. There we go. There's the pause. And from there, it will be skipped back. Or... It, no! What?! It's... He, okay, that's strange. I think he's gonna skip it back here. But no, not doing that at all. Nope, he is going for it. He is over gonna skip the Teth Pulsars over here to help out. But like I said, Foundation Support, that is gonna mean the Shin Pulsars are gonna win. Shin Pulsars and Foundations with Auto Defense are gonna beat the Teth Pulsars. Surprisingly enough, reverse the counter structure thanks to Foundations. Oh, healing, really. Healing just does that. Well, it doesn't reverse the counter structure, but it really makes it kind of moot. And down goes the Zion Turcher. This is where... Monkuki is going to teleport that thing back, but Shardan building, oh, not even building, he's actually sent back the Zion Pulsar, sorry, the Shin Pulsar to build, like I said, like I said, I just don't have the habit of saying Shin Pulsar. Zion Pulsar, yes. Shin Turcher, yes. Shin Pulsar, no. But there you have it, and more Shin Pulsars coming up. A couple of them going over to Monkuki's base, one of them actually staying at home, but most of them going over to Monkuki's base. To finish it off, and I think Monkuki, I think he can stay out of this. I think he can get through this. If he builds more Teth Pulsars, gets auto defense of his own, gets foundation support, he should be able to fend off the Shin Pulsars as long as he can fend them off while having the attacker's disadvantage while Shardon is defending. He should be able to deal with this, but I don't know. That's actually not even likely to happen. There are Teth Pulsars, sorry, Teth Turchers are likely to be the thing that Monkuki will go for. The Aerial Control Center is done. Teth Pulsars. Sorry, Teth Churchers are what's going to happen. If the Depot even survives long enough, and it looks like it won't, Monkuki, why is he not building Teth Churchers? He should be building at least three or four Teth Churchers right now. Why he's not doing that, I don't know. But he really, really needs to. Five Shin Pulsars coming in. There's more being built, I'm sure. No, not quite. Not quite at all. 
Shardan will be building some more in the future, but at the moment, no. Doesn't matter, though, because Shardan will be able to get rid of the depot. The depot... There we go, there's that Teth Turcher, but even then, I think it's not even going to be around in time. There's just so many Shin Pulsers that it doesn't even matter anymore. And once any of them die, well, that's your detection. That's the offensive detection. Five Shin Pulsers in the air, that's... That's 45 damage a second. Like, that is... Zion Turcher dead in six seconds. And remember, fast forward, so it's more like three. That's a lot of damage when you get enough of them. That's the thing with Shin Pulsers that I think maybe people didn't realize is you can, as far as Aryans go, they're very massable. And they deal a lot of damage in numbers. Mind you, given that Acron's economy has been up until about three versions ago, so like five months, pretty weak when it comes to trying to build lots of units. That's not surprising, but now it is strong enough to build all of these Shin Pulsers. That's... That's our game-winning set here. These Shin Pulsers. That is the game. Right there. That's it. Monkey has lost, and Shin Pulsers have won, controlled by Sharadan. I am glad to see that Shin Pulsers have finally found a use, at least for someone. At least in one game. Because that's where they worked here. Because, like I said, numbers! Shin Pulsers are a numbers game. As are actually pretty much any Pulsar class, honestly. Yeah, that's it. Monkey, I think, might be in abject shock at the moment, realizing he has just lost to a swarm of Shin Pulsers. But that is exactly what happened. That is how he lost the game. And that's going to be it for me tonight as well. So once Monkey surrenders, then that will be it. That'll be everything for me tonight. Oh, come on. Just surrender. Ah, there we go. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night.